Hi, my name is Yves Astein. I'm product manager for Fitech Mess Technik. Um, yes, we are here at Embedded World 2020 and I'll be uh, giving you a small tour and showing you around what kind of topics we have. Uh, Fitech is a um, typical system on module vendor. Uh, we design system on modules as you can see right here. Um, also on SBC carrier boards. The system on modules, um, we've been doing this as a core business for the last 35 years. Um, and uh, yes, uh, we provide uh, Linux operating systems and Windows CE um, based on, for, on these uh, systems. We uh, do all the driver implementation um, and we also take care of some uh, middleware uh, uh, areas where we, we, we make sure that, for example, uh, QT applications can be implemented. Um, we also uh, take care of uh, preparing uh, a development environment platform for you. So, that, for example, you will be able to receive um, uh, like a, a VMware um, that has all the pre-installed development tools. Um, we also provide a lot of documentation to work with the software. In general, our strategy is to um, support uh, mainline Linux if it's possible. So, for example, um, products who, that have been in the business for a longer time like AM335, IMX6 or IMX6UL, um, those are products that are all mainline based. This means that uh, our distribution uh, comes directly based on mainline. And um, this is a big advantage because uh, you are independent uh, of any distributions from um, the uh, chip vendor. Um, you can always uh, take the latest kernel and uh, make the system run based on this kernel. And um, so this is part of our long-term strategy where we want to make sure that uh, customers will be able to uh, run their products for a long, long time and also be able to maintain it and update uh, the operating system. So in those 35 years, you've had lots of different projects. Yes, and of course. Your your products are going in all over the world. Like behind you, you're showing like a, ro uh, a rocket. Are you in rockets? Are you in space? Um, well, no, we, I don't think we are in space. But for example, we are in a lot of other applications. In general, with the SOMs, um, we are addressing a broad market. Um, so many markets. Uh, the usage of a SOM is uh, actually very well for uh, many different types of applications. Since we are just bringing out all the standard interfaces of the SOM and enabling the customer to use an embedded microprocessor uh, in an easy way and in a fast way without a lot of um, experience for the high complex designs that um, typically the peripherals around a processor, processor need, um, a customer can go to market very fast by just taking our SOM. We have taken care of um, uh, adding the required memories around the processor, for example, the RAM and the flash, and um, we take care of uh, files and power management, everything that is very complex in a typical embedded design. And um, so that custom, uh, customer can then just take this knowledge and take um, these pre-added um, uh, values and uh, do a simple <laughs> carrier board design uh, specific to their application and then just <coughs> plug on the SOM and take the complex design of a 12 layer board and plug it on to a very not so complex design like a six layer board or sometimes even a four layer <coughs> board. And this saves money uh, in terms of um, the PCB, for example, and it also saves money in terms of um, the development time that you spend in one of these embedded designs. So you work with uh, TI, NXP, um, lots of different rock chip. Etienne. Yeah, so we try to pro, um, select um, interesting socks from the market. Um, for example, this is uh, one of the newest socks. It's an IMX8 Quad Max. Uh, comes from NXP, 
Um, this is like the typical flagship um, of processors right now um, with uh, Cortex-A72, two cores and uh, four cores, uh, Cortex-A53. This is actually, um, you can see it has 500 pins. So uh, this processor has a lot of interfaces. Um, you can use it, uh, for example, for applications where you need a lot of camera uh, interface or cameras connected, uh, lots of displays connected, and where you need a high percentage of um, processing power. What's the consideration you have when you design one of these? Is there, are they following industry standard formats or are you making your own? Well, of course, I mean, these are, we, we come from the um, industrial market, right? So uh, the quality of our um, uh, system on modules needs to be at a certain level where it can be used in, in rugged environments. It must be um, uh, certified uh, in terms of EMC uh, um, uh, and EMV uh, technology. Um, uh, we do regular tests in terms of um, stress tests uh, in temperature. Um, we do um, the RAM timings, for example. They have to be very stable in order to, to ensure that um, the system uh, runs stable uh, at different temperature ranges. Um, yeah, so uh, we make sure that um, your system uh, can be used in any kind of application that is typical for industrial environments. Um, or uh, even in environments like um, uh, transportation. Uh, we do certifications uh, like ruggedized cer certifications based on uh, train. Reliability, they shake a little bit. Right, right the liability of, of um, and it's according to, to what uh, the train makers uh, need uh, as requirements. So your boards are maybe in uh, locomotives or in trains in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. All kinds of systems in there. Yeah, that's it. And um, what's the big news here at the show at Embedded World 2020? You're talking about future stuff also? Oh uh, yeah, so the, our booth is kind of divided up into the standard products, um, but also showing some innovative um, topics. So what we are trying to do is um, we are trying to understand what the future for our customer is going to bring, right? And we try to um, create demos and figure out uh, new technologies for our customers in order to be ready when the new technology is required by the customer. So for example here we have um, um, three topics all together and these these work kind of together these topics. So we have for one, one part we have update and device management which uh, takes care of um, updating the operating system that runs on one of our embedded systems. So we, like, we try to prepare um, updates uh, capability of our systems uh, and we like to maintain this uh, updatability in our um, BSP releases. And we'll do a separate video about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and then we have um, software lifecycle management, a maintained customer specific BSP from us uh, at any time and it's actually independent of what kind of requirements in, turn of, in terms of um, Linux kernel versions are required or Yocto versions are required. But I think we are also going to have a more detailed uh, video about this. And um, yeah, and then we have um, security, which is also a very big topic uh, right now. There um, are many um, things that are happening around the topic security, uh, many uh, um, security acts that are actually uh, trying to define uh, the standards for security requirements in embedded uh, uh, systems or, or other systems in general. Um, and um, we are trying to bring the right answers and we are trying to explain to the customer um, how he can um, fulfill his um, security requirements um, based on uh, his application uh, using our hardware and using um, the socks that we provide on our system on modules. And uh, then you also talk about AI? Uh, yeah, AI. Um, we also had a video about that, right? Um, in general, you can say that we are trying to understand what AI is all about and we are trying to follow the market, um, follow whatever is happening in the AI area and understand it and see how this comes together with embedded systems. 
and um, we have an expert here. He's a data um, manager. Um, yeah. We did an amazing 40-minute video with him. It's really okay, cool. yeah. So you should watch that and. Uh, uh, listen to him. He really knows what he's talking about. It's and a big topic, the AI in the embedded world. Yeah, it is. And you're, you're, you want to be in a, in a forefront of that. Right. To permit it. Exactly. All right. And what more do you have around the booth? Okay. So yeah. in the beginning, you were you were showing this robot. What was the? Uh, how is this made? What's well, the system here? Yeah, well, this robot is actually a combination of all the things that we've kind of talked about already. Um, it, it's, it shows AI functionality, it shows um, a visual inspection, and it shows um, automa typical automation tasks. So, um, for example, um, the, so let me explain the whole thing. It's a four, four wins game, right? So we printed this with a, a 3D printer, and um, we did all this design by ourselves using one of our system or modules. And the thing is, you play against the computer. Um, you have um, the red balls to play with, and when you um, insert the ball, a camera is going to analyze um, the, the current setup. And then you say, okay, robot, please move. And according to the current setup, he will make a decision, he will use AI for that. Um, uh, and let you win. And no, he, ah, wins. he won. See, you can see it right here. He won now because I wasn't paying attention. I dropped the wrong ball, or he actually had me checkmate already because I could have put my ball here or here. I, w I would have lost anyway. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah, and he uses AI to analyze the game situation, and then makes this decision. And then the robot arm is actually um, putting in the right ball. And once you are done. Um, you press reset and it's going to sort nice. all the balls by its color and it actually also analyzes the color through the sensor right here and so this is a typical task for automation and um, visual inspection um, yeah and it's all running on just one post processor platform uh, you do a lot of that you do a lot of uh, boards that go into kind of like automation and robots and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the typical market that we yeah that we provide our products to. Yeah. Uh, are your boards made uh, in Germany or in China or? Yeah, so we have a production in Germany, and um, I would say ninety percent of all of our boards and products that we produce are produced in Germany. Yeah. So that means high quality. Yeah, of course, it means high quality. We can uh, assure that the quality is always at the highest level because we have direct contact to our production. Uh, there are no long ways between development and production. So if there should be anything that can be optimized uh, on our products, the information is uh, brought back into development right away. So, And uh, are most of your customers in Germany or worldwide or? Oh, the customers are worldwide. Um, we have subsidiaries in multiple countries, um, sales and development subsidiaries, for example, in the US, um, in China, in Shenzhen. Uh, we have uh, in India a subsidiary. Uh, we have one in France. Um, yeah, and that's, I think that wraps it up. Yeah. And the, the headquarter, of course, is here in Germany. Nice. And what's on this side of the booth? Yeah, on this side uh, of the booth, it's more oriented on the customer-specific designs. So some customers, they like to buy just a system on module and do their own carrier board design for their applications. But there are also customers that um, come by and they say, no, we don't want to do the carrier board design on ourselves, but we like the idea of using a SOM as, an, as a start point and a quick start into my product. And so um, customers would require maybe the design of a carrier board. So they typically um, specify it for us. And then uh, according to the specification, we do the carrier board design using our so own SOMs and therefore being really quick and also having the knowledge about how to design in the SOM and having the experience. And we did a separate video about the whole Zephyr solution right here. It's very yes. cool. What's going on here with the Raspberry Pi? We don't care if uh, uh, the carrier board design is based on one of our SOMs or if it's, uh, for example, used uh, as a Raspberry Pi SOM. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And that's what we are trying to show, that we can also um, do uh, designs based on that. 
uh, especially if a customer has already started prototyping on a Raspberry Pi and now he wants to do uh, a design that is actually used for industrial use and really ruggedized and um, EMC tested and so on and then he can still use, reuse his software and we can uh, design a carrier board that he can then use in industrial environments. Who makes the Raspberry Pi SOM? Who makes the Raspberry Pi SOM? It could uh, be uh, other suppliers, right? Yeah, it can be anybody. Yeah. And uh, here's a Physis, Ficor. Yeah, these are the SOMs that we typically offer also for customer specific designs. You can. Uh, which one is your top selling one? Um, right now, I would say. Um, the SOM with the most potential uh, currently for, for new projects is the IMX 8M Mini um, because it has a really great uh, ratio um, between price and performance. And the feature set is also uh, quite interesting, so it's good for a lot of applications. It's very compact. Yeah, it's also very compact. It's uh, 40 times 37 millimeters, and so since it's also solder, solder on uh, with BGA onto the carrier board, um, it's actually um, also not very high when you uh, use it in your application. And then there's uh, IMX8M stuff? Yeah, IMX8M um, is a processor um, that's also based on uh, BGA um, PCB solder on. Um, we've added some Wi-Fi to the IMX8M um, and uh, it's very well suited for our video applications. Uh, we've uh, done some driver work uh, uh, for um, adding our camera systems, um, which we will see uh, in a minute. I will show it later. Um, yes, and so this is also prepared for, for camera-based applications. Yeah. And uh, we look at some ST solution right here. STM32 MP1, which uh, we did another video about. Also, uh, you have a solution over there, right? About this. Yeah, we will provide this um, also as a BGA or um, with connectors. Um, so you can choose which type of connection you would like. Um, the STM32 MP1 uh, is, uh, has a dual core Cortex A7. It also has integrated Cortex M4. It's a typical um, industrial use processor, but it can also be used in other applications like um, HMI-based applications or camera-based applications. Um, the advantage um, of the STM uh, is uh, clearly the software infrastructure. Um, ST uh, is very strong uh, in terms of Cortex-M4 um, uh, uh, software library support. Um, since they are coming from the microcontroller uh, um, area with uh, lots of Cortex M4, they've built up a very large library. And this library can also be used um, with the Cortex M4 that is integrated into this chip, in addition to the Cortex A7, which is the typical microprocessor system. It can run a full Linux. And it can run, in addition to that, a full Linux. That's it, right. And the this Linux is very well maintained as well. Fiboard Polis. Yeah, this is a typical carrier board that we provide with our SOMs. Um, the idea behind that is that it can be used either in a series product, if a customer says, okay, this is pretty much what I require and I would like to use all the interfaces that are already brought out, maybe use some additional interfaces right here um, with, an, with an adapter that uh, the customer makes himself or we have already prepared adapters. And um, yeah, these are actually designed to be ready to use in a series product. And, um, or the customer can just use it as a reference design. He can get the schematics and then uh, just use it for his own design and take the SOM and design it onto his own carrier board with the schematics already prepared. Nice, and on the other side here, you also have a bunch of stuff. Yeah, these are typical examples of uh, designs that we've done for customers, customer-specific designs. For example, I think this is AM335 based um, design. And you can see right here where we've actually taken a standard um, um, SBC, single board computer, like I just shown you. And um, we've um, added on top of that uh, using the peripheral connectors 
added uh, another PCB that is customer specific and brings out all the um, interfaces uh, and uh, create, uh, holds all the circuitries that the customer requires in his specific application. So this is a typical uh, situation where we've just based the design on uh, a standard SPC. But we also have the possibility to do flat designs. So for example here, we've just taken our experience of uh, designing in a, a processor, a microprocessor onto a PCB. And I, I would guess this was done because of um, uh, the flatness of the system that uh, the customer would like to have a flat design. And then we just offered the flat design for him and um, yeah, did this. Um, this is an example with Idonomix 6UL, um, also a very um, interesting processor. Um, it has rivet edge uh, soldering um, uh, uh, connections. The advantage of this is that you can also prototype um, uh, with this SOM by just hand soldering it. Um, uh, you don't have to run it through a reflow or something in order to prototype your first um, carrier board. Um, yeah, and um, we also do housing designs, um, so if a customer requires a housing, we can do it made of plastic, um, we can do it ma made of uh, metal, um, we can do our, uh, the whole uh, 3D design of the housing according to the specifications of the customer, and we also have in our production a team that uh, will assemble the whole uh, housing with the PCBs inside, um, yeah, this is also hard. So here, for example, you can see that these are um, ruggedized industrial connectors um, that were required from the customer. Um, yeah. And here I see a train subway. Yeah, this is a typical um, um, device where um, from the company Bombardier they make um, lots of different types of trains and they make the internal communication systems and um, this is one example of a design where we um, have made a, um, a, these um, sandwich kind of connections um, of the multiple PCBs that are inside one of these boxes and I don't really know what it's... oh it's, okay so it seems like this is a CPU card right here and then this is the Ethernet card and the UART card and I guess this um, is some sort of board system um, with the communication channels brought out. And um, this is also one uh, typical example of uh, what Fitech can do. Um, in general, uh, Fitech offers um, the customer to um, pull any kind of uh, service card that he likes. So he can just, the customer can just buy a system on module. Customer can also uh, get a carrier board design, but he can also get um, the housing in addition and then get the full product um, uh, from us. He will receive the uh, Linux support, for example. We can also do BSP specific BSP application um, uh, adaptations. And um, in this case, uh, the customer wanted the full-on solution where we are actually we've actually designed the complete product in terms of hardware and also in operating system support and so you can see there's a uh, this is a ticking ticketing system uh, typically from uh, ground transportation so from uh, public buses and this ticketing system um, will print out the ticket uh, do the payment um, uh, it's it's nearby the driver and um, the driver will also get information about his route, um, so its navigation is inside a GPS module, and um, it will also um, apply uh, the outside signs uh, showing wh which bus number um, the current bus is driving under and uh, what the next stop will be, and so on. So everything is being managed from this system, and Fitech is actually um, doing the full. Uh, design was has done the full design. Um, meanwhile, this is the sixth gener generation of this product, and we are um, completely assembling the product and then actually sending it to the end customer of our customers um, after we have applied the right software to to the system. Nice.
And so this is kind of like the full-on solution that we right offer. Over there is a bunch of stuff about it. embedded imaging. What do you do with that? We created an extra um, team that uh, has specialized on embedded imaging based on um, embedded modules, on our embedded modules. Um, they have uh, tried to figure out what, how do you do imaging on these modules. And so um, one big topic is, of course, in industrial environments um, that you, when you need a sensor, a camera sensor, that this uh, camera sensor needs to fulfill the requirements of industrial environments. And um, for example, longevity is one topic. So typically our customers require a lifetime of a product of at least 10 years, um, typically even longer. And so when you're looking for a, a camera sensor, you can't just go out and uh, buy the next camera sensor that was used in a, um, in a, in a, in, for example, in a mobile phone, because these will not be available for a long time. Um, so we found um, camera sensors that are available for long term, and uh, we design them on uh, these carrier boards, and we offer the applicable um, optics to go with it, and we also um, uh, show the customer how to um, choose the right kind of optics for his applications. And then we do driver implementations um, in order to integrate these um, camera modules into our embedded systems and to support them under Linux, for example. We've actually We've actually designed um, our own standards in terms of connection of these camera modules. So, um, for example, um, there are typically uh, camera sensors that have parallel camera interface, but these uh, parallel interfaces, um, they are not very suitable for uh, longer distances um, um, when, the, when the module, for example, the camera needs to be a little bit further off from the um, base system. Um, and therefore we've created an interface that is LVDS based and which is much more better um, to, uh, because it's using differential uh, signals and then much better suited for um, longer distances. So the sensor might be from Sony or some other sensor provider and you put it on the little board there? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. right. So yeah, and um, on top of that, um, we also um, try to prepare um, our systems um, even a little bit further. For example, here you can see, here's the camera module with um, the optics on top. And um, yeah, you can see yourself <laughs> right now in the picture. And so this is connected to, um, what is it, a Ficor IMX 8M. Yeah, like I told you, we prepared this um, for camera usage. And um, we try to also look at the middleware that is required in order to do visual inspection. Um, for example, Halcon or OpenCV for accelerated um, visual inspection uh, is something that we uh, prepare um, and we look that um, uh, these systems com uh, combined together with the camera drivers really work. Right. So there's a lot of cameras in this corner here. Yeah, these are the different types of camera modules that we offer. Um, yeah, it's just different kind of flavors. Um, different resolutions. Different kinds of resolutions, right? Um, color or um, black and white, for example. And um, also the different kinds of interfaces that I just mentioned are here also listed. FICOM P, FICOM S, FICOM M. S for serial, P for parallel. Yeah. And, uh, and M for maybe. And there's also a product over there. We did a separate video about this uh, STM32 MP1 demo that you have. Right. Um, yeah, we did a little demo here to show um, uh, motor control usage um, and uh, how it can actually do real-time tasks of um, controlling a BLT. BLC motor. So, what's your what's your plans for the future at the, at the company? Uh, is there a lot of expansion happening in the embedded industry and uh, getting to a more global market? Or what's, well, we're what's already next? globally set up pretty well. I mean, we would always like to um, expand in, into all the markets, uh, especially also the eastern markets are interesting. Um, 
In general, what we want to do, of course, we want to follow up on the technology um, that is happening. As I showed you, all the innovative topics that um, are always interesting for us and we want to always keep an eye on that. And uh, in addition on that, um, we want to, of course, always stay in close contact with uh, um, the chip uh, makers and uh, uh, always be on the innovative side also on, on the chips that we provide on our system or modules. And um, in addition to that, um, services, uh, one big uh, topic, um, customers are partially overwhelmed with the complexity of embedded designs, especially because uh, technology is not stopping, it's moving forward and complexity is getting higher. And so we are um, very focused on supporting our customers to um, get help beyond just buying a system or module, but also to get help from designing in their modules or just doing the software development.